Hey guys, um, welcome to this video and in this video we are going to discuss about how is India connected to the internet. This is a very important question and mostly most of the people should have an answer to this question. What is internet and how India is connected to the internet? Nowadays we see, uh, you know, the bandwidth increasing, you know, we see the faster 3G speeds and 4G speeds and we are seeing the 10 Mbps has uh, the minimum, you know, the requirement to watch a movie, to stream a movie online. So we need to understand in depth how India is connected to the internet. So India's combined internet speed is 36,000 Gbps. 36,000 Gbps, uh, do you know you can download 36,000 movies which are 1 Gb per second. That is the speed that combined internet in India is getting. Where does your internet service provider get internet from? How does uh, internet reach India? Let us dive into the world of networking. More than 99% of the internet traffic relies on high quality fiber cables connecting various countries. Only a minuscule part of the traffic goes through the satellites. So it's all about fiber optics and the underwater sea cables. So you can see there are four uh, what we call as continuation points. One in Chennai, one in Mangalore and one in Mumbai. So you can see that on the first image right now, we have two lines coming out from Singapore uh, via Chennai and some lines are coming from Mumbai and some lines are, uh, you know, concating on uh, the Mumbai coast. So what happens if all these lines are down? So the internet you uh, has you experience will be completely down and you have to rely completely on the satellite communication. So these cable networks are laid and maintained by various governments and giant companies. Uh, such projects are usually undertaken by multiple companies during the, uh, due to the large cost of investment. There are three tiers which differentiates the size of the network held by the company. That is the tier one. So let's discuss about the tier one and then we go for tier two and tier three. So tier one, these are the companies which have the global network connecting so many cables around the world like at and they will be able to provide access to any destination on the internet without paying fee to others. They usually access the network of uh, other tier one companies without paying any fees. This network acts as a backbone to the internet. So if the tier one is down, the entire world communication for the particular company like at and or uh, CenturyLink, uh, other companies, BT and all, uh, the entire uh, you know internet connectivity will be down so that is the tier one companies so let's talk about the tier two companies these are the companies which have the regional networks and are usually connected to one or more tier one networks that is for redundancy they connect to one or more uh, tier two networks they have to pay a fee to access the tier one company network so uh, this is how uh, the tier 2 works like the data communications data communications I have logged into the data communications in order to get uh, some you know the pictures that you see on the screen right now So let's get started with the tier 3 These are the internet service providers that you from whom we buy our broadband connections These are the last tier that connect uh, the internet to the end users like, uh, you know, the ACT and all the data communications, Bharati, Airtel, Reliance, Globalcom, CFI, BSNL and all these uh, things which are connected. So, when we talk about how it, how is India connected to the internet, India is connected to the world at Mumbai, Cochin, Chennai and Tutti Koran. So, these are the four locations that um, uh, India is connected to the world. All of the other international uh, internet traffic goes through these port cities. Uh, the place where international cable connects uh, to the land is called as the landing stations. So, when we say about Tata Communications, Tata Communications own three landing stations that is in Mumbai, Chennai and Cochin. They are only the type 1 company from India. So, Bharti Airtel for example, they own two landing stations in uh, Chennai and Mumbai. Reliance owns one, uh, you know, 
the landing station out of Mumbai. Sifi owns one landing station out of Mumbai. BSNL owns one landing station out of Kirtukaran connecting to Sri Lanka. So on the eastern side, we are connected to Singapore from Chennai. On the western side, we are connected uh, to uh, United Arab Emirates through cables from Mumbai. And the southern side, we are connected uh, to the cables to South Africa. So this is the entire map that we need to be very well versed. Like we need to understand what are the tiers uh, of providers that we have. What is the landing station and what are the four points of, uh, you know, the internet landing stations. Uh, handing over the traffic from one network uh, to another network is called peering. There is no, there is a non-profit organization which is owned by the government, which we in India we call it as National Internet Exchange of India, which allows uh, Indian ISPs, you know, to... Uh, to use each other's network in an efficient manner rather than uh, you know uh, using the foreign service this also increases the quality of service for the consumers and decreases the chances of uh, the data being snooped by foreign agencies such as NSA and all the other things so so this is National Internet Exchange of India NX, NIXI was the one which created the dot in domain uh, uh, the extension of dot in in the registry so on the fourth picture you see the networks within india there are several networks within india uh, one of them is Railtel, which i'm going to discuss which i use uh, at my um, you know at my home it's a government project actually started in 2000 to lay fiber optic cables along the uh, routes of the railway tracks these cables are capable of bandwidth of more than, you know, uh, 400 Gbps and have a redundancy systems which read out the traffic in case of any malfunction at, at any point. Um, they have a network currently, or uh, as of 2016, they have a network of uh, uh, 30,000 kilometers, uh, which you can see it in the fourth uh, picture. So the National Fiber Optic, uh, Optical Fiber network this is a project started in 2011 to convert all the 250,000 gram panchayatis via high speed fiber optic cable at a cost of 20,000 crores that is approximately 3 billion dollars so the plan was to use the ex, uh, existing uh, optical fiber networks of Rildel, BSNL, the power grid and to extend these networks to different locations the aim is to bring the minimum 100 uh, mbps connectivity to each gram panchayat as of 2015 only 40 percent of the planned network has been completed so it's 60 percent which is remaining and that needs to be completed so india used uh, six, uh, 967 petabytes of data per month in 2014 and it's it's increasing at a rate of 33 percent per year it is expected that it will grow to 4 exabytes uh, by 2019 and according to a newspaper which I did some research on uh, from 2013, India has a total internet bandwidth of 33,900 GB per second although only 6,000 uh, GBPS uh, are used, are ready to use only uh, you know uh, 1,110 GBPS are consumed. So there is lot of lots and lots of bandwidth that uh, can be consumed. So when we discuss about the inter Indian internet connectivity and all, why don't we discuss about the new projects that India is doing? Uh, India is establishing a new cable landing station in Dinga, West Bengal, connecting the Southeast Asia was approved in 2014 uh, for an amount of 1,600 crores. Since then, uh, I did not get much information out of this project and a new connection is being established from Bangladesh to Akartala. This will give a better connectivity to northeastern states. This project was signed during the PM uh, Modi's recent visit to Bangladesh. So internet discon disconnected. Now the evil minds out here, you know, it is possible to disconnect a country from internet by cutting these cables. In 2012, only cable connecting to Bangladesh to the internet uh, international network was cut off and they lost their internet for nearly a month 
uh, you know similar incidents happened um a portion of uh, uh c me v3 cable uh, the subterranean cable located 35 kilometers uh, you know south of karachi that provided pakistan's major outer communications became defective and disrupting all the pakistan's uh, communication with the rest of the world affecting more than 10 million internet users so these are the different types of things that we need to be very careful of when we are using these cables to connect to the internet so india has uh, as i told india has uh, four landing stations so india is a bit uh, you know redundant but uh, the load on uh, for example if the mumbai landing station goes offline due to the cable cut and all uh, it needs to depend mostly on uh, the eastern coast which is uh, chennai and tirukkuram that will itself uh, have lot of uh, bandwidth issues and load balancing issues uh, that are very important so i hope this video uh, is informative to you and um thank you very much for watching this video and uh, i hope uh, you learned something out of the video and please do subscribe for the channel for more videos like this i i will try my best to bring the more informative videos and the videos where we can learn lot of things thank you very much for watching this video and have a wonderful day bye bye